to John 3, 16. Are y'all ready? I want y'all to read it. One, two, three. Stop. For what? One more time. You will not execute if love is not attached to it. Question your motives of why you keep quitting. Why do you keep quitting? You don't quit on what you love. You quit on what you like in a minute. But you won't quit on what you love. I need you to hear me. This is going to be crazy. This is going to be insane. I need you all to help me out real quick. And I need you to take 20 seconds when I say this. And if you do not move, it's fine. But I need some praisers in here who are going to take this word and say this is going to manifest in this year. It's going to manifest fully by April. It's going to manifest fully by March. It's going to manifest in the first quarter of this year. Are y'all ready for the, what I'm going to get ready to say? My passion is getting ready to pay me. Look at somebody say, my passion is getting ready to pay me. I'm going to be seated real quick. I'm working y'all up. I'm working y'all up. Is this helping anybody? Look at somebody say, your passion is about to pay you. You won't get paid well by the things that you keep quitting. You'll get payments. Paul teaches us, I live by the gospel because I love the gospel because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You can't live by what you only like. That's why y'all thinking about quitting your job every other week. Am I lying? And here's the crazy thing. You know you got bills. You know you got rent. But whenever the manager say, we're going to send somebody home, you the first one with your hand up, send me. Oh, let me, let me, let me say this. And they're going to get real quiet when, you know, you like your job. You don't love it. I must tell you you don't love it. The reason you like it is because you show up when you feel like it. You don't love your job. The reason you like your job is because you don't clock out for lunch when you actually go. You clock out for lunch after you go get your lunch and you sit down with your lunch. You don't care if you get fired or not. Fire me. Do me a favor. I'm going to collect unemployment until I get the next job. For God what? He's so loved. Now, have y'all ever paid attention to that? For God so For God so loved. Does that imply, Jade, that he no longer loves the world? Does, does that imply that in this current moment we're in, because y'all know loved, E.D. is what? Meaning, I used to love the world. That's how we would take it. But we say, because we don't really take the time, we say, for God so loved the world. Oh, God loves the world. No, he loved. 
is past tense. For God so loved the world, loved the world, loved the world, which means it's past tense. Well, technically, when we are looking at the deity of God, the writer has no point but to put ED on it because God is. I want you to hear me. There is no beginning to God. There's no ending to God. So in order for us to understand what the writer is saying, he put past tense on it. And the reason he put past tense on it, I really feel like screaming and running through a wall. The reason he put past tense on us on it is because when we actually take the time to study this, what the writer is trying to tell us is for God so loved past tense that he loved us so much in a previous state that he set an ongoing plan in motion that would exceed that particular time. So God, so the writer is telling us, God loved us before we knew ourselves. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. So according to God and in God's timing, it's already done. I want you, I want you to look at your, look at your neighbor and shout, hey neighbor, you're living in the present tense when you should be living in past tense that whatever God has already said, it's already done. So he executed the plan because there was a break. There was a break. He says, so for God so loved the world that he what? Gave. Love is connected to giving. Love is connected to giving. Love is connected to giving. Which is why parents go broke in Christmas for their children. Because love is connected to giving. Y'all don't want to talk to me in here. Love is connected to giving. This is going to hurt right here. And I know, I know I said this one a rebuke message, but I just got to throw this correction in here. You can't say you love your church and never give to your church. And I'm not talking about money. A part of it is money. I'm talking about time. I'm talking about talent. I'm talking about ability. You'll sit right there and know you can do something, but because ain't nobody asked you to do anything, you'll sit there and... But remember what I said about humility. Humility does not mean that you sit back and wait for somebody to ask you. If we are sitting in here and I said, man, I need somebody to do hair. And you, know, thank you. If you know how to do hair, promote your business and say, hey, I would love the opportunity to have the chance to do your hair. Here are my styles. If you, do, if you bake, if you print shirts, if you write books, if you draw on eyebrows, if you give edge jobs, if you drive trucks, if you give financial advice, whatever you do, if you clean the houses, whatever you do, if you produce music, if you take pictures, if you know how to fight, if you whatever you know how to do, and there is somebody who needs your service, look at somebody and say, this is the season. No, offer it give 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 my pastor used to always say hey I need some preachers to preach I'll do it all the other ones you know if you need me no I don't care if you need them I'll do it because I want to preach I refuse to sit back and let my gift rust out y'all can have it Y'all can have it, not me. And I don't care if you call me arrogant. I know I'm not arrogant. I'm confident in the gift God has given me. And my problem is I don't want God to come back and look at me and say, you unfaithful, wicked servant. You did not produce, nor did you multiply what I've given you. For God so loved. Are y'all ready? I'm probably going to lose my bishopric when I say this. I just got it. I don't even care. I don't even care. Y'all see, I don't even have, I'm supposed to be having on a robe and chain and all that stuff. I mean, I'm cool with it. For God so loved the what? 
Mm. For God so loved the what? The world, cosmos, everything, everybody, not just the church. For God so loved the world that he did what? Okay, are y'all ready for this? If God loved the world so much that he gave, we're not even going to go. God loved the world so much that he gave. Why are you only limiting your business to church people? Why are, okay. Why are you limiting your business to people who don't even like tipping the waitress when you go out to eat? For God so loved the world. the world, everything that he gave. Stop limiting yourself to church people. Broken women are not only in church. And I'm saying that because I got some women in here who used to be broken and they're healed. And they got some books and stuff that they're getting ready to release. And I am giving you permission. Don't just target church broken women. There are broken women in the world who has what you need. Who need what you have. There was a, there was a news article that went out. And I'm, I'm probably, I'm, you, <laughs> again, I'm probably going to lose it. You got my back, Zay? Um. There was an article that went out because it was a Christian-based cake business. And a same-sex couple came to the cake business and said, we want you to make us a cake. Where those Christians stood firm in their faith and said, we're not making you no cake. Not up in here. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I'm not going to call them dumb. I'm not going to call them crazy. I'm not going to say they lack faith. But at the end of the day, the last time that I checked, gay money spend like straight money. Oh, y'all don't want to. That's too much, Reverend. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Because the difference is when it leaves their hand and comes to my hand, the money changes. See, they were using the money to up build, to you know build Satan's kit, but when it hits my hand, the wealth of the wicked is laid for the righteous, but not for y'all because y'all only do business with church folk. This is a Christian-based business. It sure is for me and my employees. Now y'all customers, you can do whatever you want. Just pay the price. I shall execute. I'm helping you. Is this helping you? I'm almost finished. Ooh. I'm almost done. For God so loved, for God so loved that he, his, his, you give, and the only reason you give is because you got a backup. You're not executing the plan. Because when you love something, you don't mind giving your only. You don't mind giving your last when you really love something. People will never understand why you invest in your business like you do. People will never, un where's Rico? People, Rico, people won't understand why you took the time to buy a thousand dollar camera. Because you had a multi-million dollar vision. They'll look at you and say, that don't make sense. If you don't go and get that $10 camera. No, 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 no. I don't have a $10 vision. And Oh, God, I felt this right here. Is this going to touch somebody? Your vision is too big for you to be cheap. God knows. God knows. Your vision is too big for you to be cheap. Hear me and hear me well. Do what you got to do with what you got. Yes, but stop limiting yourself by saying what I don't have. Yes, 
If you are not willing to invest in yourself, why should anybody else? For God so the that he his only. His only. So when I'm sitting here, hey, you know what I need you to give today? I need you to give $100. Well, it's all I got. There goes your love. There goes your love. He, he gave his only. But here's the thing. He gave it to the world. Scripture says that the world despised him. Isaiah said, and it's what Isaiah says, the world despised him. God being all-knowing knew that this is my only son. I'm getting ready to give this to a group of people who will disrespect what I have. You've got to execute the plan no matter who applauds you or not. For God so the that he his his only begotten son his only begotten son this is a piece of me and a part of me I want you to hear me and hear me well a lot of you are frustrated and will stop executing. And when you stop executing, you feel empty. The reason you feel empty is because you've given a piece of yourself and left it there. But you got to continue to work what you give. Stop starting and not finishing. Because Paul here in Ephesians gives us this notion, and I'm finished. Paul here in Ephesians, Ephesians gives us this notion, and God's given us this word. He says, and this is the plan right here. And this is the plan. What is the plan? God had a plan of salvation. God had a plan of deliverance and restoration. And it, Paul says, this is the plan. And the only reason we are here today is because God executed the plan. I want you to hear me and I'm in with this, this statement and it might hit some of you in the gut, but it is, is meant to fire, to fuel you up. You look less like God and more like the devil when you keep stopping and not finishing. Name me one thing that God started and did not finish. If you are tired, I don't even want you to raise your hand or look at your neighbor. Look straight at me. If you are tired, if you are overwhelmed, if you are constantly depressed, I'm not talking about moments, constantly depressed. If anxiety is constantly overtaking you, you do not look like God even though you were made in his image. You cannot be allergic to work in this season. But the problem is, some of you are overworking. If you are going to execute the plan fully, I want you to be honest with yourself and ask yourself this question. Have I planned a vacation day this year? I want you to hear me because scripture says that God worked six days and on the seventh day he did what but what did he do first he completed you are trying to vacate to run when you should be vacating out of accomplishment By February, God, these are the plans and this is what I'm going to do. And in February, I'm going to rest and I'm going to celebrate. I'm no longer, I want you to hear me. I am no longer walking and running away from things out of fatigue. God stepped away 
because he said, I desired my son. There he is. I'm well pleased with him. See y'all later. And we hear nothing else from God in the New Testament because he executed. And Paul picks it up and writes, for this is the plan. And at the right time for your life, the Lord will bring everything together. But what you cannot do is fight against what God is doing. I want everybody to stand.